Welcome to the back seven of the 2023 College Disc Golf National Championships D1 Women's Singles Final 13 round. My name's Alexis. And I'm Cece. Welcome, welcome. We're so excited to uh, walk you all through the back seven of this final 13 holes we played. We have Cece, myself, Lily Marr, and Taylor Rowley all battling for a championship title. Yep, everyone's within one stroke here and everyone's been in the lead at some point. So it's certainly gonna be tight finishing up these last holes. We will be starting out on hole 11 and it's gonna continue to be a battle. Yes, we're all, we're all in it, anybody can win it. Hole 11, it's 302 feet. Um, it's just this kind of uphill shot off the tee, wouldn't you say, CC? And you're trying to just get out to those trees we passed so you can pitch up or make a little bid at this basket that's surrounded by these bushes. Yep, so this little uphill straight off the tee pad really makes you throw your disc a little more nose up than the rest of the fairway that's very flat. What are you throwing here? I'm throwing a um, lightweight Hades. I get caught up by those trees. I was trying to kind of go to the right side, which is a little more of an aggressive play, I think, than just straight. What about you, Cece? So I'm throwing my heat, and I'm trying to save the left, just do a nice gliding turnover. And it's looking pretty good. I liked it out of the hand, and then we got caught up in those trees. They same tree. <laughs> yep, sometimes it kicks out, and I take it right into the middle. For those of you who are new to watching college disc golf, the ladies this morning, before this final 13, played a full 18 holes. And those scores were average for each of the team members and added or subtracted to their current team double score that we played in round one on Wednesday. So round one of the team was played yesterday. There'll be two more team rounds played before we crown a national champion. That's right. <laughs> so Alexis is straddling out here. You know, I was looking at this hyzer putt and I didn't like it. I'm not a hyzer gal, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like straight shots. <laughs> you put it right up near the basket though, you should be able to get a nice par. So I looked at this shot for a while. There was a lot in my way. And um, when I finally decided on something, I didn't go as well as I wanted, but I think you did the best you could in that situation. You were right in the middle of that clump of trees. Something we uh, talked about in that front six, make sure you go watch it if you haven't yet. Um, but this is singles. There's a lot more pressure. We are in a final round now, but I think there was as much pressure in that first round for a lot of us uh, trying to get the best score we could for our team uh, to move up the leaderboard. And so um, playing singles in this situation, um, you don't have your partner anymore. Really makes a good run at it there and lands in the bush. But if you're in those bushes, you're good for a putt. They're really quite close to the basket. It's a nice putt from Taylor until she'll take the par on this hole. So going into the final 13 on that first front six, uh, Lily Marr was leading, but she's gained some strokes here. I've stayed even. Cece, you're one over, and so is Taylor for the round. So a lot of movement. Anything can happen, and anyone can win this. There's definitely still holes out here that are birdieable. There's ones that you're worried about getting bogeys. So we've still got some stroke separation coming. Last season, we had around 30 qualifying events. This year, we've grown to more than 70 regionals and conference events for this season. That has led to more than 88 schools in attendance and 700 competitors. The energy you see from the players and the passion that they have when they're representing their favorite school or their university is incredible. It really makes this event special. You don't see that anywhere else in the disc golf world. So this is hole 12 on the River Run course. You really want to keep your disc nice and straight 
through this line, the creeks going across the fairway play is casual, and the pond on the right is OB. Um, so you really, if you can just get down there, it's about 232 feet to an elevated basket. This hole played slightly over par today at uh, averaging 0.31 strokes over par. There's actually one birdie by Madeline Joyner, so congrats to her on getting a solo birdie for this hole for the round. I hit an early tree. That is not the spot you want to be in, folks. You want to make it down the fairway to make par, saving a par much easier. Lily yanks it right, but she stays safe. It's actually a great place to land. You've got a good look at the basket still. So we've got Taylor here on the box. She's either throwing a buzz or a buzz SS. She loves those discs um, for these kind of wooded fairways. She definitely hazarded that a little bit, but she should make it have made it up the fairway enough for um, a good pitch out for par. What are you throwing here, Cece? So I'm throwing my meteor, um, just a little bit of hyzer to hopefully have it pop up, ride straight, and just stay down that middle gap. Oh. I love this disc for wooded holes, just a little control on it. What a great shot. You laced the line perfectly, Cece. I was really happy with that. I'm over here in this brush pile. Should just avoid it. It's really bad. Oh, and I just overturned this disc. I'm trying to go wide, but I know there's OB to the right. So now I'm over here in this brushy stuff. And they throw a little Anheuser, and it was a great shot, but it was... Too great and went OB. Yeah, it looked really <laughs> great till that last second. And he had nothing. Taylor's pitching out her forehand to save her par. That was a great pitch. Up. Found great, great upshot there. We still haven't gotten to your drive, CC. Little looked like she was giving it a bit of a bid, bid here. Um, misses it, but she should still be right around the basket. Are you running this, CC? I am not. That little tree was right in the middle of the basket for me. And with the elevated basket, I was worried I'd go too far. Those bushes behind it are not great to be in. So at this point in the round, Cece, do you know the scores? I did not know the scores. So my caddy's keeping an eye on scores, uh, letting me know if like you need to push a little more or such. Um, but I don't want to know the exact scores. Just keep the stress level down a little bit. Just trying to stick to the game plan. There's some holes here you can push on, and some you just have to stick to the game plan and accept that, you know, a par birdie's maybe not in the cards for me. Yes, so. So here we're figuring out where your disc went OB. Um, so I sort of off that rock there, you can see your disc in the background. So I know I haven't played this hole well. And so I definitely am going to try and get this into the basket to save a double. Nope. But I don't because I got scared. <laughs> Those outside of the baskets are intimidating sometimes. Especially if you can see what's behind them and know what you might have to deal with. So like we talked about lead changes, I was in the lead and I gave it up right there just like that in a blink of an eye. Yeah. A great putt. Uh, that will be for a par. And I'm just trying to get my triple and get off this hole fast. <laughs> Nailed it. Let's go. And then Daly will also be looking to put her par putt in. She so will. Yep, just little drop ins. Nice pars. That 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 gain strokes right there. That was awesome. You did what you needed to do. Yep, that hole can definitely. Those trees can get you. So a par is good. This is hole 13. 
Um, it's 354 feet. You're trying to pump a drive right out to this area, this landing zone, so that you can pitch something up to this basket that is probably one of the hardest baskets on this course. Just being in the middle of those trees, there's only specific spots where you'll have an open look. That's either to the right or the left. Um, yeah, that. Uh, yeah, I'm generally aiming for that right side of the basket. I think it has the biggest gap there. What about you? I agree, I agree. But it's a hard hole. There were no birdies on this hole. And um, that just goes to show how difficult it was. Lily ends up getting caught in the brush at the end there just a bit. Yes, great drive. It's a really nice shot. I think on this hole, you feel like you have to go hyzer, but if you just punch something straight, you're, you're golden. Yep. So I'm throwing my grace here and Oh, you slip. You yank it just a little bit with the slip. But well, it, you get through. It mostly just redirected it. I got about with the middle, so I'm okay with that. And sometimes we like trees, y'all. Sometimes they're nice to us. What are you throwing? I'm throwing a Hades, and I'm trying to just take the same line that Taylor took. But I turned it over. Um, but I'm out the gap. That's not the worst spot to be. You can generally pitch it up there. But you can see I'm pretty far away. But I pitch it up. I have a great upshot to the open side of the basket leg we talked about on that right side. You get a weird kick there. Yeah, I got a weird kick off that rock, which is a bummer. But Millie's got a great upshot there, a little turnover. And Taylee got so far. Gone. What a great there. I she did not get that. Rounded the corner just a bit. She's got a clean layup probably at the basket because it is so guarded it's hard to run it but but you can kind of see that left side she's looking at of that clump of trees around the basket is open yep just a little layup that's perfect beautiful it's all a little farther away than i wanted with that kick off the rock but i'm giving it a run that left side's open and you hit and you just sit. So that's yep. totally fine. We'll take that all day. I'm giving it a run. I have an open look. Oh, oh the chip. It's the end. Look, just come out and I get a terrible roll behind where there's no look at all. Yeah, that's super unfortunate. That was very frustrating. I knew that I had just messed up on hole 12. So I was definitely upset. But all I could do is pitch up, tap in a double. Do you hope? Just such a tough basket with, I mean, it's at least fifty percent of it you can't get to the basket if you're, you know, more than five feet away. No, I've seen people feel a little vertical disc throw, and sometimes they get it through, but it's it's tough. It's not that's not a throw or a putt you're, you're wanting to make. No, and the point. So Lily's here is trying to figure out how to get to the basket from this spot. You see that little little gap in front of her. There's a wider gap to the right side, which it looks like she's going to try to go for. Yeah, that just goes to show how hard this this hole is, especially at a par three with this weird angle. I mean, that was a great putt by Lily right there. This is a dumb basket. I'll tap in for my bogey. So Taylor gained a stroke on everyone by just getting a par there. So this is hole 14. It's 349 feet. So we've got the river running along the right side here with the OB line. And the basket is perched up on this little hill. Um, so oftentimes this putting green will be more windy than the rest of the course. So you really want to get something out there with some good distance. Lily's going, it looks like a little turnover. Yeah, she's throwing a wave with the turnover, and she just burns it over, but stays in the fairway. Next up, we have Taylor. This point, Taylor is leaving, but only by one stroke off of you and Lily.
She throws it out there. She gets really good distance. It fades out a bit at the end, but she will be up almost pin high, I think. So I'm just throwing my lightweight wraith here. So I'm trying to go turn a neighbor, big turnover. Yep. Give it some height and let it fade right. Oftentimes there's a little bit of a headwind on this hole. It was pretty calm today, the earlier rounds. Yeah, and I felt like once we walked up the fairway some more, it was actually a tailwind, which was different than what we've been playing it as. Yep. So my, my shot faded out there a bit at the end, but I got the distance I won at least. I'm trying to get to the pin. I made a bad shot, hit a tree, and I make another bad shot and go OB. <laughs> Just need a little more fade there. I the distance. Yeah, I've been at the distance. <laughs> well, is going forehand for upshot, coming up onto that hill. She won't quite make it up the slope. She'll be at the bottom of the slope. She'll have some work for her par. Yep. Looking at the water behind the basket, which is also scary. Now I'm just trying to get up there. Throw a putter. Get out of there. Failed <laughs> that shot. It's intense during these last couple of holes, too. Wouldn't you say, Cece? It is. Everyone, you can tell, nerves are getting a little farther up. Everyone knows it's close. I know I was score watching, uh, so I knew I was putting myself in a really bad position. I think everyone does it differently. Like you said earlier, you don't look at the scores at this point, right? Yeah, I keep my caddy. My caddy's watching, but... Lily giving it a nice bid. Nice putt. She cashes it. Let's go, Lily. What a great putt. That was for her par save, too. So amazing, amazing job. We had a fun day, though, wouldn't you say, Cece? Despite great. the intensity and the pressure we were under, we had a lot of fun. Great vibes on the card. I've uh, actually gotten the chance to play with CC at several tournaments. Well, we met last year at College Nationals in 2022, and then we played USWDGC FA1 together there, and that was a lot of fun. That was. I love being on a card with you, Alexa. Oh, thanks, CC. Love being with you, too. It really helps to have, like, a positive card and positive energy you know, to keep the mood up, especially when it is so intense and you start making mistakes. can kind of keep level-headed, I feel like. Yeah, I feel like everyone here knew they had a chance, but it was cheering everyone else on and just hoping for the best. Taylor just missed her par putt. I tap in her double bogey. Then we're going to move on. Yep. So here we are on hole 16 of River Run. So we actually skipped hole 15 in this final round layout. So this hole is 329 feet. The basket's right along the creek on the left here. So the play is sort of to lay it out wide um, and then pitch down normally or try to get a hyzer to hyzer in close to the basket. And there's OB all along this left side before you kind of get to that peninsula area the basket's sitting on. And Lily yanks that right, but hits a tree um, and just kind of sits down there. I think Taylor's chucking her Zeus out here. Big hyzer. She has so much power. It's so amazing to watch. And she gets a little hyzer skip, which is a great position to be in. Yep. It's pretty much where you want to be. What are you throwing? So I'm throwing my Grace again here. So, hoping for a very similar shot to Taylor. Looks like it. Yep. We'll give it more light. Yeah. yeah. So, I end up a little bit more inside, closer to the basket than Taylor, but pretty much the exact same distance. 
Now I know I'm really behind, so I'm going aggressive and I hope to get close to the basket for a putt. I'm throwing a lightweight crank. I hit that kind of more inside gap perfectly and I'm asking for it to skip and it does. That was beautiful. So I have a chance for a two here. I'm four back of Taylor at this point. So Lily ended up a little bit shorter than you hope to be. That throws a nice, it was a shot. Gorgeous approach, look at that. She's got a chance to save her par right there. So Tammy is going back to that really rubbery blowfly type disc just to kind of make an easy up shot and stay in. So this is a touchy up shot with the water right behind the basket. You want to get it close, but not too close that it goes in the water. See where your disc lands. So every time you throw, you're like, am I safe? Am I safe? <laughs> Did it roll? Did it happen? <laughs> but she made a great up shot. You're trying to do the same. You have to just float something in there. And you hit those rocks that are favorable and sat you right there. Yep. So I'm going for this putt. I know I need it. Get it. Oh my gosh. And it's so as close or high enough. But I sit right there, so I get a par. That was for Lily's par putt. How are you feeling here, Cece? I'll be honest, this putt was a little nervy. It's not quite as close as I wanted to be with the water behind it, but I knew I had to go for it and that this is a putt I should be able to easily make. And you do. It's how those situations can really get to your nerve. Yeah, you know the pressure's on this round. We're coming down the final stretch. Everyone's still, our leaders are both at plus four. I'm one stroke behind them. You're making a push, trying, you know. I know when you were running that putt, I was like, she wants this. <laughs> I did. It's one of those things you just accept what you did. You make mistakes. And for me, it's just like, I can only control what I do on the next shot. So we're all doing really well. It's still anyone's game at this point. 17 and 18 are very tricky holes. All right, we're on hole 17 of River Run. It's 303 feet OB all along the right side with a painted white line up to this basket. There's OB on the left side with the creek water. And you're just trying, this is, it, the, the fairway narrows as you go down it. So it's super tricky. Yep, the fairway gets narrower, it also fast. So sometimes you're just gonna skip. It's not an easy shot. Taylor hangs one out wide, which is really the play hanging over that OB um, creek area and just fading back. She executed that really well. I'm going to play. I'm going for more of the turnover shot here, so I generally try to follow the fairway. I've done the big hyzer, but if you don't get back in bounds, you're starting really far back because the last time you were in bounds, only about 20 feet off the tee pad. So I don't get it over quite enough and I get OB. Um, but at least I am farther up the fairway than I would have been with the hyzer. So true. I'm going Avenger SS here. Again, I know I need a birdie, so I'm going big. This looks like a great shot. It's coming in. I did not know what happened to that. Wow. Parked it. Good job. Thank you. That felt really good. I, I didn't know I was parked. I knew I was up there and had a chance for a birdie. So Lily's gonna try and go huge hyzer and she goes a little too big hyzer. And then it just falls, the cut will be back in bounds. So like you were saying, Cece, she's taking it like 20 feet from the tee pad here. So she's got some work to do. Got a similar shot. And she just hung that too high. 
and it finds OB on the creek on that left side. That's the thing with this green being so narrow, you don't have much room to land those shots. But a nice pitch up there. So I also went OB, so I'm just stepping off the OB line here. And I'm just going through the layup. I don't think I can reasonably make a putt from that distance. Making smart choices. She gives that great high, a great bid, bit of a tailwind, but she'll get a par. And an unfortunate triple bogey for Lily there. I'm sure that did not feel good. Yeah, such a bummer. That hurts. So me and Taylor are almost on top of each other. So I'm just going to mark my disc so she can make her putt more comfortably. So I assume you still don't know scores here, Cece. Nope. Okay. No, so all the way up to 18, I'm talking to my caddy about, you know, okay, if I go for it, if I know, you know, what does that, how much strokes do I have on either side of me as far as losing or gaining position, um, but besides that. So this is hole 18. This is a great final hole. You're flying over this green to the creek and the basket is on an island here. So you've got OB behind still. And so your first shot, you either land before the island or you have to land on the island. If you go OB, you're going back to a drop zone before the first creek. So, Alexis, are you going for it here? I'm going for it. I got my comet. There's very little wind. I need a birdie. I hit the island. I knew I did. Didn't know how far I was, but it was a great shot. Yeah, it's really hard to tell. You can't see the disc once it gets to that point. We saw it roll around. We knew you were safe, but we didn't know how far. It was nice. We had a bunch of teammates down there on the left side cheering for us as we go down this final hole. Try to put the pressure on Taylor here. She yanks it, clips this tree. Right. She rolls OP, but lands in bounds. Wow, that was just... Wow, exactly. What a pressure shot and what a great outcome for her on that first shot because she knows I'm there potentially for a birdie. You're only two back. Let's her back. Yep. Anything can happen on this 18th hole too. Yep. It is a great finishing hole. You've got a lot of score separation still, a lot of pressure. I unfortunately am going for it, but clip a tree branch there and I fall in the water a little less tree love there and, yeah it was that similar tree branch to what tay lead quit but you went ov and it happens <laughs> it does lily made the layup play just to land before the first water and now pitches across great approach and i find that layup play really scary because it's not guaranteed no there that basket is elevated this there's a down slope behind it ob right behind it Yep. So I'm playing from the drop zone. Perfect. Or more Hamburg there. But yeah, that drop zone or that layup, you can still glide out the back and then you're still going from the drop zone. So this is pressure for Taylor. She needs to at least get a double bogey at the worst. And she leaves that short. She's on the island, which is huge. And all she needs to do is lay up. And she does. Beautiful, great round by Taylor. Beautiful round. Now I'm trying to make this putt because I know I'm one back a CC here. And so I know this is for solo second. Man, the timer makes it look really far. <laughs> <laughs> it was a big putt. It was, you're looking at this elevated basket. You nailed it. Nice work. Thank you. That was a huge sigh relief. Not the finish I think any of us wanted, but we're so happy for Taylor. Oh yeah. She played such a solid round, especially coming down this end stretch. So clean at the end. She's such a great player. First time at college nationals. 
She's uh, with the BYU team. She just graduated in December 2022, and because she just graduated, she was able to still play with their BYU team. At this point, our first round of 18 decided the team score, so that was subtracted or added from that. So now Mizzou and BYU are tied at the top at plus three after these uh, single round scores. Final 13 did not factor into those scores though, but we did crown a national D1 singles championship. Congrats, Taylor. Great rounds. Colleagues Disc Golf and the Professional Disc Golf Association, congratulations. Awesome, thank you so <laughs> Go have much. Fun. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for watching. Uh, make sure to um, like and subscribe to Skyheiser Productions. We're really um, glad you were here with us, and congratulations to Taylee. Tune in for coverage of the team rounds that will be coming up on this same channel.